a better place to start might be what are the conditions of your water and what kinds of fish will do best in that water. So let's begin there. I think that's the right place to start. Let's start with your water. Now, what do you want to look at? What's important? Well, there are two very obvious things right at the beginning. And as I'm thinking about this, so many things are running through my mind because there are more than two. Maybe we should start right at the very beginning. The very beginning would be, do you have well water? Your own deep well water? And if you do, do you have a chlorinator hooked up to it? Do you have perhaps a water softener hooked up to it? And if you do, then we have to consider those two, uh, the, the effect of those two uh, pieces of equipment on the water that is coming out of your tap. Obviously, if you have a chlorinator, you got to get the chlorine out. Now, a better way to go would be to find a faucet, probably outdoors, that has water coming directly from the well that is not going through either the chlorinator or the, the water softener. If you do, if you can find that source, then that's the water you need to use. Use water, in other words, straight out of the well, not treated water. Now, why is this? Why do you not want to fix your water to match your fish? Well, there are a couple of good reasons. One is that you're going to have to do that every time you make a water change, every time you top off with water, you're going to have to fix that water every single time you put even a little of it in your tank. And that'll work fine until you forget or until someone decides to top off your tank with water straight out of the tap. Then you're in trouble. That's probably a good reason. But another very good reason is this. Think about it for a minute. The water straight out of the well, right out of the ground. That is the very water that fish are living in in your local environment. The very same. Now, to be sure, there is the potential for toxic water for water that contains some kind of oh some kind of toxin some kind of poison that will affect your fish directly how do you know if that's there how do you know if you have poison in your water in your natural well water well there's really no effective way to test for that. I mean, you can, you can take the water to the local water municipal supply and ask them to check it for toxins. And they may or may not be able to do that. You can run a little experiment and see if live organisms will live in the water. Although I rather expect that if that water is coming out of your well, and if you're drinking it, and have been for any length of time, that you can trust the water. Nevertheless, if you want to test it, try catching some local little fish 
and put them in it and see how they do. Or buy something inexpensive, some feeder fish, goldfish, shrimp cupping, something inexpensive. Put them in it and see how they do. Likelihood is they'll do just fine. So, all right. Now we have well water that's perfectly fine. Let's, let's scoot on over to the other side a minute and look at municipal water because that is the more common source of water for more people. You need to call your local water supply company. The municipal water supply people and ask them what they put in the water. Do they put chlorine in the water? Do they put chloramines in the water? Do they add ammonia to the water to make chloramines out of the chlorine that they put in the water? Do they put fluorides in the water? Find out what they do. Is the water RO water? Do they have an RO system? And if they do, do they add minerals back into it? So you want to get an idea of what the mineral content is. Of what chemicals are in the water. And that's going to determine how you treat the water in order to be able to remove chemicals that you don't want. Now, let's say, for example, you have water like we have here in Venice. We have water that contains free chlorine. That's all. Chlorine. It is RO water that they add minerals back into, including carbonates in order to be able to maintain a stable 7.5 pH and in order to make the water relatively hard. The GH general hardness is about 25. That's not high by any stretch, but it's not negligible either. So I get water in to my tanks or to my through my tap what do i do with it well it has free chlorine what does that mean it means there's chlorine in the water that will evaporate it's a gas it, it dissipates out of the water and does so rather quickly so if i put a bubbler in the water uh, in a in a big tub of water i've just drawn in a matter of an hour or so the chlorine is gone. In point of fact, the level of chlorine is sufficiently low that I can put that water directly in my tank. I know because I've done this. It does not affect the fish at all. The chlorine dissipates almost immediately. So I can use water out of my tap straight in my fish tank. Now, if I had chloramines in my water, I could not do that because the chlorine would not dissipate. It's locked in to an ammonia uh, molecule that creates a, a, a liquid. The chloramine is a liquid and it stays in the water. That's the purpose of putting the ammonia in with the chlorine to keep it from gassing off. Frankly, why they want to do that escapes me. But I suppose it has to do with uh, being an effective bacteria side. Okay, so nevertheless, we now have chloramine in our water. What do we do about that? Well, you can use a dechlorinator. There are a number of good ones. I use sodium thiosulfate crystal which precipitates out the chlorine, doesn't affect the ammonia at all. It does in, in double dose, which is two crystals per gallon, 
it breaks the chloramine molecule, frees the ammonia, uh, the chlorine, leaves the ammonia in the water. The ammonia is in such small quantities that it it has a negligible effect. And so we'll, if there are plants in the water, if there's a deep substrate, that ammonia is taken up rather quickly and so does not become a problem. Okay, so there's, there's some chemical stuff having to do with how you deal with the water when it comes in to your tank, comes out of the tap and so forth. Let's take the next step here because this is the really critical one. And it gets back to the question I asked at the beginning. What kind of fish does your water like? Well, let's look at it. Your water is very soft, let's say. Uh, very acidic. Maybe coming out of a well, maybe coming out of your, coming out of your tap. Uh, I've had soft acid water coming out of my tap, municipal water. So, what does that mean? Well, it means, for one thing, you don't keep mollies in it. Because mollies won't survive. What do you keep in it? You can keep tetras in it. Tetras will love it. In fact, there are a lot of fish that will love it. The pH and the hardness of the water is going to be a determining factor in the kind of fish you can keep in that water. So you need to know what the pH of the water is and what the hardness of the water is. Your local fish store should be able to test this. In point of fact, a local pool store will be able to test it. Your local water supply will be able to tell you what it is. You need to know that. Before you put fish in your tank, you need to know what the pH of the water is naturally coming out of the tap, and you need to know what the hardness of the water is. Now, suppose you want to keep fish that prefer water or water that prefer fish that are very different from the water you have. Can you change it? Sure you can. Do I recommend it? No, I don't. Not unless you have at least five years experience with at least five tanks in your fish room and you have been dealing with water quality and water conditions long enough to have a pretty good idea of how to make these kinds of changes. Do not assume that it is simple. Do not assume that you're going to be able to do it without much difficulty. You will not be able to do it if you're a new fish keeper without much difficulty. It will be tricky and you will make mistakes. And the mistakes very well may kill your fish. So my advice to you is don't try it. Particularly if you are new to the hobby. Try to find fish that are going to be happy living in your water. Now, one group of fish that will be delighted to live in your water are local native fish. And you really need to consider local native fish. Here in Florida, we have some absolutely stunning local native fish. Beautiful little fish. We also have uh, our fair share, perhaps more than our fair share, of non-native invasive species, some of which are really quite desirable. So that's a consideration too. 
Find out what kind of fish live in your local water. Learn how to keep them. That is a major, major step in being able to really manage effectively your hobby. Get out into a local ditch, a local pond, a local stream, even a local river. Set some minnow traps, get a seine net if you can, even a little dip net. Try to catch some local denizens. Doesn't have to be just fish. It can be invertebrates as well. Catch some of these local fish and put them in your water. And study them, watch them, look at them, pay attention to them. Try to gain an understanding of what they're doing. Of what is keeping them alive. Of what is making them happy. Learn how to feed them without overfeeding them. In fact, beyond that, learn how to create a food web in your tank. That's really a very fundamental step to be able to take. Now, in order to do an effective food web, you need a deep substrate. So, you'll need to check some of our videos to learn how to do that deep substrate, a food web, some local fish. Oh, you're going to have fun for a year or more. Watching these guys, observing them, they probably will spawn for you. You'll probably wind up with babies. And you will not have spent more than the cost of the tank. Think about that. This hobby does not need to be, does not need to break the bank. In fact, if you're doing that, you're probably being foolhardy. Because you're probably trying to do things that you really don't know how to do. And you probably are going to fail. Start at the beginning. Start with what is simple. What is available. What is obvious to do. Start with animals that your fish are going, to be, are going to love and are going to take care of, that your water is going to take care of. Start with fish that your water is going to be able to take care of. Wrap your head around that and you will be well on your way to being a very, very skilled fish keeper. So enough of that lesson for today. Try to take some of these steps. Now, if you want to know more, and if you want to be in conversation with people who are doing the same thing and those who have done it and know their way around, some little, some a lot, join us over on our Father Fish Discord channel. It is an absolute delight, a joyous place to be, so much fun, so many new friends you will make there, and so many areas, channels, you'll be able to plug into and have conversations on and learn about, well, every aspect of fish keeping and so much more. The link will be posted below. Just click on it. It'll take you there. Answer a few questions and you're in. And you'll find wonderful new friends. So, Father Fish, love your fish and appreciate the character of your water. Because that determines the fish you are able to keep. Love you all. Bye for now.